Welcome back to our uh, video lectures, and uh, we're going to quickly walk through uh, the Acts of the Apostles. As the book is titled, The Acts or Actions of the uh, Early Apostles uh, in regards to their obedience to the command or Great Commission that we saw at the end of the Gospels, that they were to take the Gospel to all the nations and to make disciples. And um, actually, the book of Acts begins um, with that same uh, idea or that same uh, mandate that Christ gives his followers. So let me read that as the book of Acts opens. And the book of Acts is also written by Luke, who uh, wrote the Gospel of Luke. In his um, opening lines to the Gospel of Luke, he mentions uh, the idea of writing to Theophilus. And here he talks about that continued account of what he had uh, observed and records he was able to collect. And, and so he historically uh, takes us through uh, the church as it is birthed and continues forward um, after the ascension of Christ. So in the very beginning of the book of Acts, in uh, chapter 1, verse 1, the first account I composed Theophilus about all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up, after he had by the Holy Spirit given orders to the apostles whom he had chosen. To these he also presented himself alive after his suffering, by many convincing proofs, appearing to them over a period of forty days, and speaking of the things concerning the kingdom of God. And gathering them together, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father had promised. Which, he said, you heard of from me. For John baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. And so when they had come together, they were asking him, ask, the disciples asking Jesus, saying, Lord, is it this time you're restoring the kingdom to Israel? And that's a key question in uh, the history that's uh, marked out through the narratives and the expansion of the gospel in the book of Acts, because uh, they were Jewish, and as a result, they were looking for their Messiah to restore their kingdom that they knew, the kingdom of Israel. And yet, we know, looking backwards, that uh, God had a much greater plan than that. And so when they asked him this question, Jesus said to them, It's not for you to know times or epochs which the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you shall re receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and even to the remotest part of the earth. So God is beginning the final stages of the fulfillment of his ultimate plan of of taking his redemption to all the earth, literally to um, to all tribes, to all nations, to all people groups. And so that's key because the disciples' questions set the tone of their understanding, and yet Jesus broadened that um, by saying, no, you're to take the gospel uh, to the entire world, to Jerusalem, Judea, uh, Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the world. And so that's an important key. Uh, so Luke wrote the book, as, um, as we see here. Um, Luke was also a travel companion in Paul's ministry. And so much of the, the narrative and travel narratives that we see and events in the life of Paul uh, Luke was there recording. It was probably written in the early to mid um, 60s, uh, but the purpose of the book was to tell of Jesus' works after his death and resurrection, which is the passage we just read that that uh, Luke was recording what the goal of the gospel is as Jesus made it clear, not only from what we saw at the close of the gospels, but also what we see throughout uh, the book of the Acts of the Apostles. And so the key themes here are that Christ continues his mission on earth through the Holy Spirit. And uh, you see that in Acts chapter 2 uh, with the advent of the Holy Spirit. Uh, secondly, that the gospel will go to all nations, tribes, tongues, and peoples. Remember their question, the disciples' question in verse 6 was, what about the kingdom of God here? What about Israel? And uh, Jesus redirected that uh, to taking the gospel to all the world. Uh, 
And um, that specifically included, because they were Jews asking about Israel, that specifically included the gospel going to the Gentiles, as we see clear evidence of. But then also the fact that this mandate was to be carried out through the churches uh, that were established. Um, and we see that as the Apostle Paul um, ministers the gospel and local groups of local believers um, were embodied in what we call the church. Um, and that's the local group of believers together um, and primarily geographically. So uh, those are important themes in regards to uh, the book of Acts. The uh, general outline of the book, and we'll just uh, talk through it really quickly here, um, that uh, the gospel goes to the Jews through Peter. The early parts of the book, uh, about the first third of the book, it deals with Peter, and he's the predominant uh, ministry figure. We see Peter preaching um, at the Pentecost sermon. Um, we see the church being birthed by the advent of the Holy Spirit, um, and as a result, Peter's defense of those who when the Spirit came upon them, were accused of being drunk. And, and Peter sets forth uh, with Old Testament quotations, as we see Old Testament quotations all throughout the book, uh, this aspect of God's Spirit now being given uh, to all flesh, to men and women and boys and girls, um, that they might be a part of or be enabled to be, be enabled by God's Spirit to be a part of God's plan of taking the gospel literally around the world. Uh, we see Peter's ministry um, not only in the multiple sermons we see early on, but also in the early church setup. In Acts chapter 6, we see um, servants set apart. But then we also see that as the church is moving forward, persecution arises. In Acts chapter 8, we see Stephen specifically in speaking a defense or really the first apologetic to the early religious leaders um, not only being persecuted, but being put to get put to death, being the first martyr for the faith. And then as a result, we see people scatter from Jerusalem. And as they scatter, obviously, they take the gospel with them. Um, an interesting note before we move on to Saul's conversion is that Saul was a witness to uh, Stephen's being uh, put to death because of his defense of the faith. And uh, it would be almost impossible to believe that that didn't somehow have an impact on his life, even though in his life um, he thought he was doing what was right according to uh, the, the Jewish religion. Uh, but God got a hold of him and turned him and converted him. And that's when Saul becomes Paul. And then we also see the conviction of Peter in Acts chapter 10 going to Cornelius, uh, being one who, in going to Cornelius, who was a Gentile, a Roman leader, he was convicted by the vision of the sheet with all of the different animals, uh, some of whom were initially unclean in the Old Testament law that God says, now anything I proclaim as clean uh, will be clean. And so we see this change not only dynamically in the life of Saul, but we see this change begin in Peter, a change not just of salvation, but what the gospel does to an individual, as well as God making it clear that he is sovereign and uh, he will adjust the hearts of mankind. And so this is through about the first third of the book of Acts. The rest of the book of Acts is predominantly uh, the Apostle Paul, and um, what the Apostle Paul's uh, ministry is about after his conversion. So we see the gospel going to the Gentiles, uh, primarily through the Apostle Paul. We just mentioned Peter and his ministry to Cornelius. But um, in Acts chapter 13, Paul begins. Uh, um, he is set out and to, uh, unto this missionary journey, which would eventually be multiple journeys, um, and where he was set out by the church and set apart uh, to be one who would uh, minister on behalf of the gospel. Um, but then he has to come back, uh, speaking to the Jerusalem Council, which ties back into the gospel going to the Gentiles because of the um, Jewish leadership 
within the early church. Um, they had to deal with this issue, which again was God changing hearts and allowing hearts to see that the gospel was not limited to just the Jews, but that it was to go forward. And then Paul, uh, through most of the rest of the book, we see his missionary journeys continuing, um, and then he gets arrested, um, finally is uh, arrested kind of on the same pattern of Christ, that there were those who just couldn't stand who he was and, and what he stood for. And as a result, they had him arrested, and he appealed to Rome, being a Roman citizen, and so as a result gets sent to Rome for trial, and uh, that's really where the book of Acts ends. Um, he is under house arrest, but he still has the opportunity to preach uh, the gospel and is, is free to communicate uh, from, from that position. And so I think it's important to recognize a couple of things just quickly in closing as we talk about the book of Acts. If you look at Robert's version of the Bible as a whole and the kingdoms that were brought about, you can go all the way back to creation and back to the book of Genesis in the beginning, and, and we see God's initial uh, mandate for Adam and Eve to be fruitful and multiply, so too as they were for all of humanity in God's creation, the early church becomes that, that uh, group that is the initial uh, ones who have the mandate to be fruitful and multiply, and thus we have uh, the gospel taken uh, literally to to uh, to all to the uttermost parts of the earth, and uh, that's an important correlation tied back to the beginning of creation. And uh, so, just as the initial creation uh, included the mandate of being fruitful and multiplying, so too. Uh, the new creation in the gospel, the fact that the Bible says we're new creatures in Christ, the new creation has that same mandate to be fruitful and multiply. And so I um, would encourage you to, as you read through, just see and sense and know how that uh, mandate not only is fulfilled, but how we still today, some over 2,000 years later, are still a part of this incredible journey of God's people in regards to uh, his kingdom work. So I trust that'll be an encouragement to you. Um, let me also just say, as so many of you are doing already, uh, keep up your weekly assignments. Uh, don't fall too far behind. And um, I trust that, that our time together is an encouragement to you. And also feel free to contact me for any reason, if there's any way that I can help you. Um, as we've walked through this um, through this outline of scripture together. God's blessing upon you.